you know, energy you don't dream of overnight. These are long-term investments. You have to need lots of funds, and you need a very clear uh, policy framework. South Africa has learned a very long, hard lesson, and it's still in that process. Uh, and we must make sure we don't get there again. So at least we have an electricity plan. Now we have to make sure it gets implemented. But for the rest of the continent, those are some of the things that's lacking. Uh, the fact that you need a long-term plan, that you need a policy environment to do that, you need a management capacity to exploit that, uh, and you need uh, government, uh, you know, you need certainty in terms of policy uh, and government implementing its policy decisions. That's crucial. Our perspective of Africa is one that is, is very bullish, and I must say to everybody that that is true for most global power companies. The opportunity lies in Africa. You have some of the fastest growing economies on this continent. You have an abundance of primary energy resources. Africa can sustain itself 10 times over with everything it has. It's got an abundance of renewables, etc., etc. So we certainly see ourselves playing a role uh, within uh, the continent. Uh, we, we're certainly the largest power company on the continent. And Africa's growth is also going to be regionalized. I see a greater sense of cooperation amongst different regions in Africa. Southern Africa, we have the Southern African Power Pool. We've got great resources, gas, coal, hydro, and an abundance of renewables. And as Eskom, we certainly see ourselves playing a role. Same with East Africa. I think West Africa has got a bit of an energy deficit from a private energy perspective. And North Africa, you know, Egypt certainly dominates, and, and a lot of work needs to be happening there. But one of the key issues in Africa, over and above skills and policy, is the fact that we need to start getting energy security through greater interconnection. You know, so everybody wants to build a power plant. It's not that easy. Somebody has to. But if everybody is connected, like in Europe, we can get greater energy security. I think there's a, there's a strong opportunity for the solution to come from South Africa. I think we've got skills. We may not have funds. Uh, we've certainly got the construction companies that can do civil engineering. Uh, we could industrialize the building of all transformers in, the, in this country for the rest of Africa. But we, could, um, we could supplant the Chinese and the other global players who are looking for Africa as a market and make it our market. We have the primary energy in Africa. It's abundant. We've also got this abundant human energy. But it needs to be unharnessed and unleashed. We talked about finance as a constraining factor. But truly, uh, finance is not a constraining factor, uh, in my opinion. Uh, we, need to, we need to reach out to all these sources of finance that are available. We've just seen in the Renewable Energy IPP program, where the private sector has put in billions of rands into renewable energy. This is not coming from our taxpayers' pocket, from the fiscus. It's coming from local and international sources. Uh, we need to harness all these things, and we need to look at what are we doing wrong. Africa's, what is doing wrong in South Africa and in Africa is that we have this institutionalized, monolithic monopoly that has got a grip on the energy sector and is not allowing new players to come in, not necessarily directly, but the regulatory framework, the policy framework, uh, and even within ESCOM, uh, the monopoly hangs on to its status quo. We've got to restructure this environment. That is exactly what Nigeria is doing. They're restructuring the energy sector because of the total failure of, of, of the monopoly uh, state-owned enterprises that have got a grip on that industry. It is so true that some of the largest companies in Africa are sitting on stockpiles of cash, not knowing where to invest um, at, at present. If we can create the certainty in terms of policy in terms of environment for companies to see that they can make a 15-year investment with a return on their investment in a stable environment, we can forget about the development finance institutions because private sector has got the finances to help us to raise whatever is required, but they need the certainty around who will manage the risk and, and will they be able to turn a profit. With, with certainty, you can have the private sector uh, really financing all of the... Uh, that, that will never happen, I don't think, because the way that, that, that energy supply is structured, and if you look at the profile of the project cycle, in the first two phases, um, you will never have the private sector. You must de-risk those projects um, from the many risks that it has, both in terms of um, political risk, in terms of operational risk. 
and it is later on at the end of the day. And that's exactly what happened with the renewables program in South Africa. I think to a large extent, the government was able to de-risk those projects and then pass it on to the private sector. So, so I think we, it, it's, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort, I think, that, that a, a PPP partnership that, that will make this happen.